Hi there, this is lecture four for ET250. Uh, the topics we're gonna cover today are a proof for resistors in series in parallel. Uh, it just shows you how uh, these, the simple equations came to be using our fundamentals of Ohm's law and KVL and KCL. Uh, we're gonna look at a, a test for how do you determine if elements are in series or in parallel. It's a very simple concept. Uh, then we'll look at an example of how would we uh, collapse down a resistor network so that if you had a bunch of resistors, you could simplify it to maybe one resistor, right? Uh, we'll look at two new tools called the voltage divider and current divider. Uh, they're just combinations of KVL, KCL, and Ohm's law, uh, and uh, they just make our lives a little bit easier when wanting to compute a voltage or current for resistors in series or parallel in this case. Uh, and then the last we'll look at nodal analysis and a new form of Ohm's law called nodal Ohm's law, and it uses node voltages. Okay, all right. So let's begin with this proof for resistors. All right. Okay, so we know that if we have multiple resistors in series, we can combine them together just by adding them up, right? So if you had 10 and 5 here from the perspective of these two terminals A and B, uh, this is the same as one single 15 ohm resistor. You just add them up, okay? Um, and you would just write series just to let your future self or myself know what you're doing here. And this is the simple formula. R1, 2, 3 is the same. Uh, R1 plus R2 plus R3 is the same as R equivalent. Okay. Uh, now, where did this come to be? That might be a question you have, like why, right? And could we, can we use our fundamentals from the first few lectures to see why that's true, right? So let's say we had a system where there was three resistors in, in series, and they could be N, like 30 resistors in series, but let's just use three now to highlight um, this. I think there's enough uh, resolution here to figure out why. And let's say we wanna represent the same system with one resistor. So notice I have uh, a, a voltage across it and a current I going through all of them. Same voltage here and I going through this one. And what I would want is equivalence. I would want this behavior to be the same as that behavior if this is, you know, this R equivalent is supposed to represent these three. On the right, this is easy. I could combine the behavior here using just our simple Ohm's law. V equals I times R equivalent. Now, I could somehow reduce this to kind of an Ohm's law, and what I want to see is a V equals I times something, and that something, for this to be the same, should match this R equivalent. Okay, so now let's go through and see how this works. I can do a simple KVL if I have all these voltages labeled. Negative V plus V1 plus V2 plus V3 equals zero, as I've written here. Uh, I can apply an Ohm's law individually to each resistor and notice the current is entering the positive terminals of all of these voltage, voltage labels. And so um, I would get V1 equals IR1, IR2, IR3, blah, 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 right? Like this, okay? All right, so now I've got my voltage here written in terms of the other three voltages. I've got these three voltages written in terms of the single current. Boom, 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 plug them all in. And what I get is V equals I times R1 plus R2 plus R3. And notice if I wanna make these things the same, then R1 plus R2 plus R3 must match that R equivalent. So this is just a simple way of showing where does this relationship come from to make equivalence, and this is it. All right, let's look at parallel. So we know that parallel has uh, um, uh, the equation where if I want to find the parallel equivalent resistance, I add the reciprocals, and so this is uh, the equation. And so same idea uh, for our kind of proof, quote unquote, uh, is that we have a complicated system with multiple resistors in parallel, and then we want it to be the same as this simple system with one resistor. And so how would we link them together? Now notice again, we have the Vs here, the same V on the outside, the same I entering here. And we're gonna treat this whole thing as a node. That's okay to do. And uh, we have um, the ability to use KCL this time and Ohm's law for the three different resistors here. Of course, there could be many resistors in, in parallel, but let's just use three for now. Um, so we have KVL, well, KVL, we can even use that too. All the voltages are the same, they're all in parallel, right? Minus V plus V1, well, that's gonna be the same. That's nice. Uh, we have the three ohms law, great. I1, R1, V1, perfect, all these three. Okay, then we have KCL, 
And we have this I equaling I1 plus I2 plus I3. So that's this one. So we got these three big steps here. Now notice I've solved each of the Ohm's laws for their respective currents. And so I can just plug them in, right? And because all the voltages are the same, notice I substituted V for one, two, three. And so that's why I have V, V, V here. Those all plug in and I get I equals V times all of this. Um, and if I uh, rearrange, I can get V equals I times one over blah, 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 right? Notice on the right simplified side, V equals I R equivalent, in order for this to match, right, equivalence, then R equivalent must be this one over, uh, one over formula, the addition of the reciprocals, right? And so again, this is the simple, uh, a simple way to just kind of show us where these relationships for parallel or series are coming from, okay? Hope that helps in some understanding. Okay, now let's look at a simple test for parallel and series. Now, uh, here's an example of two elements that are in parallel. In fact, this is actually in series as well, but these two elements are in parallel. And one way to look at it is check if, uh, if both sides touch. Okay, so does this side touch here and does this side touch here? Yes, so it must be in parallel uh, as well. Now, let's look at A and B. Uh, for A and B, the bottoms touch. Yay, but do the tops touch? No, you got the C element in the way. So this is not in parallel. A and B are not in parallel. Okay. Uh, what about for series? You can check if current would flow directly from one element to the next. So let's look at this case. Yeah, if you were a little uh, electron or if you were a positive charged particle, you would flow from A to B or B to A. There would be no other like branch that you could go off to. In this case, however, a and B are not in series. It might be tempting, but nope, these are not in series because this could branch off into C, okay? So just an easy way to just double check, are, are these in, in series or in parallel? And remember, all elements in series share the same current. They have the same value of current, okay? And actually all elements in parallel have the same value of voltage. Now the signs might be off depending on how you label the polarity, but they have the same magnitude of voltage for parallel and they have the same magnitude of current for series. Uh, and you can use your KVL and KCL to prove that. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so here is a kind of a complicated, semi-complicated uh, resistor network, okay? Um, in this case, we're making it easy. We're setting all the resistors to be the same value, right? I'm not gonna say, we could pick any value, three ohms, 10 ohms, doesn't matter. And we have some voltage supply, all right? So let's say we wanna use our parallel series tools to be able to collapse this down so that we have something that looks like this, where we have this voltage supply, instead of seeing all this nasty resistors, maybe we don't care. We just wanna represent all this stuff as just one single resistor. The question would be is how does this resistor relate to all of these ones, okay? And so we can start chipping away at this problem uh, and just identifying, well, which ones are series and which ones are parallel. And so, for example, we could look here, we maybe we, we, we can use these tools here and go, well, is this in parallel with this one? Might be tempting to say yes, but it's kind of like this situation where you got this one in the middle uh, that's in the way. Yes, these two touch, but nope, no good. All right. Uh, you might say, well, are they in series then? Nope, because if I was current, I'd flow this way, but I have a choice. I can go this way to the right or down. And so, nope, these are in series. So you might have... Uh, more often than not, a situation where the resistors are neither in parallel or series, okay? Well, let's keep going. What about these two? Oh, these two, let's do our little test over here. Do the tops touch? Yep. The bottoms touch? Yep. So I would say these two are in parallel. Good. What about over here? Do we have any simplifications? Uh, we can see that these two resistors look like they're in parallel, tops touch and bottoms touch by the shorted wire. Good. Same with the bottom two. Okay, so that's excellent. We can start chipping away uh, and reducing those down. And we can see that these top two become this one, these two, bottom two become this one, and these two on the side become this one. Um, and this is our equivalent resistance for two resistors, R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. If they're the same resistance, they simplify to R squared over 2R uh, or R over 2. So just a little thing to make you a little bit faster. Two resistors that are equivalent value in parallel is just half, right? And you see that here, and you can see how it was derived to be half. 
All right, so I have r over two, r over two, and this is r over two. And notice I redrew it, and I was very careful about getting everything aligned correctly so I didn't make any mistakes. Okay, now at this point, I can do another uh, uh, identification of some simplification. So here it looks like these two now are in series. And I look at these two. Oh, these two are in series. Okay, and you're probably already thinking, well, if I combine that in series, maybe that one's in parallel. And yes, you'd be right. And then you could go, well, if I get all this into one resistor, then this one and this one in one resistor, then they'd be in, in series. And you're like, yep. And so let's just go slowly and make sure we get all the steps right. Um, but uh, yeah, okay, so what do we got here? This one goes, collapses to one R, right? Because you have R over two plus R over two. So it's just a regular plain old R. And then these two reduce to three halves R because they have one plus one half R. So you get three halves R. And then you go, okay, I can now compare, uh, compare these ones and I see that they're in parallel. So I can combine that. So that's gonna be three halves R times R over three halves R plus R, okay? And what I get is I get a, let me scooch, scooch this up, three halves R squared, yep, over five halves R, and that reduces to three fifths of an R for this total one, okay? All right, and the very last one, because these are in series, then I get R plus three fifths R and I get eight fifths R for this total resistance from here to there, okay? So this R equivalent is eight fifths of, a, of an R. Um, yeah, not too bad of a problem. And you'll see a bunch of things like this, but uh, yeah, I hope this example helps. Okay. The next tool that I want to go into is what we call the voltage divider. And this is a very, this is a very, very useful tool. Okay. And so let's uh, um, see how it works. If you have multiple resistors in series, this is a tool that will allow you to solve the voltages of those individual resistors. And it gives you a relationship between the total voltage, this Vs on the outside, and these individual ones. It's dividing, it's called a voltage divider because it's dividing this total voltage into their uh, little resistors, okay? So that means this voltage better be less than the total. Same with this one. Right, and the sum of all these voltages by KVL should add up to this original. So, if you are, you know, that's just a double check to see if uh, if your math works out. And in fact, when I was writing this lecture, um, I actually was making some modifications, and I was adding up these, and they didn't total up the total to the total voltage. And I was like, what's going on? And I had missed the value. So, um, it's just a good check. Okay, let's see what the equation is for the voltage divider and then look at how we would apply it, right? So this is the equation, Vn, so for example, V1 here, uh, would equal to plus or minus the total voltage times this ratio. So this ratio would be the R you're looking at divided by the R equivalent in series, okay? Um, and so let's just look at how this would apply to the two specific resistors. So on the left, we would have V1 equals, we'll ignore the sign, I'll go in the sign later, plus or minus for now, Vs, that's this guy, times R1, and these two, these two in series are just the simple addition of both of them, R1 plus R2. Now the question is, well, how do we now get that plus or minus? And we look here and go, well, are the positive terminals of V1 and the source, uh, are they facing each other, right? Or are the negative terminals facing each other? Either one's the same thing. Um, and they are, and so therefore we can use the positive version. And we see V1, Vs and V1 have a positive terminals facing each other, yay, we'll use the positive. Okay, now on this side, we're, we're looking at resistor two, and we can say that V2, so this time N is two, is equal to Vs, the source, so same as this one, times R2 over the sum. So look at the pattern, you guys see the same pattern going on, right, all described by this equation. And notice the sign. Now in this case, see how the negative faces the positive, right? Or the positive faces the negative, either way you wanna think about it. In that case, you would use a minus sign here. So Vs and V2 have the positive negative facing each other, okay? So this is just a nice tool. I didn't have to solve any occurrence. I just noticed that if I know this total voltage and I know all these resistors, I can use my voltage divider principle to solve for the individual voltages. Pretty nice little tool. And it actually just relies on KBL, KCL, Ohm's Law, and we'll, we'll show a little mini proof later. 
Okay, let's do another uh, example. Let's, let's, let's do one with numbers. And so let's say we have the situation, multiple resistors in series, two voltages, we, we don't know them, VT and VR. We have the source voltage, we have the resistance values. Let's solve for VT and VR using voltage divider. So let's look at the 17 ohm one first. So uh, let's see what we got. We got VT, yep, equals 10, that's the source, times its own resistance, 17 over the total sum, 17 plus 12, yay. Now let's look at the sign. If I see, oh, we gotta be very careful, plus pluses face each other or minuses minuses face each other, yay, I'm gonna use the positive version. Okay, if I do the next one, I can see that VR is gonna equal to the total, right, 10 in this case over 12, or sorry, sorry, times 12 divided by 12 plus 17. And the sign will be, I think, negative because the minus and positive face each other, right? And so that's what we get here minus source times 12 or 17 plus 12. Notice uh, the difference is here I use the 12 in the top, here I use the 17 in the top. They both had the same source, they both had the same denominator. This one had a positive sign because the terminals are facing each other and this one had a negative sign because they were opposite, okay? The values I got were 5.86 and negative 4.14 when I crunched these. And does that make sense? Again, you always wanna make sure you're getting physical intuition, checking the, the units and everything. And like I said, I calculated a number. I had, I had actually put 17 plus two in my original calculation. I'm like, crap, these numbers don't make sense. And so because I added these in my head, I'm like, wait, that doesn't add up to 10. What's going on? I had forgotten the one or the tens place in this 12 and when I recalculated, it was like, oh, great. So what do we have? We have five uh, here for VT, okay? So this is five volts with a low pressure here, high pressure here. And we have negative four, uh, which is X, because it's kind of got the flip polarity, it's low pressure here, high pressure here, 4.14. So going this way, you can kind of see this is gonna be 10 volts from low to high. I know it's upside down, it's a little tricky to think about it, but you can pause the video and try to reason that out, that this makes sense, and it's uh, in terms of this. If you did a KVL around this loop, you better uh, get consistency between these two values and that final one. Okay, let's keep going. So if you had more than two elements in a uh, series, again, you could apply voltage divider. So let's say R1, R2, and R3 are known values, right? We don't care what they are. Let's just say they are known and you had the system. Let's say we wanted to uh, find V1 and V3 in terms of all this stuff, right? Okay, we can use that same pattern, Vn equals plus or minus Vs Rn over R equivalent. And in both cases, I believe we'd be using the positive version. Notice positive, positive facing, positive, positive facing. So V1 equals positive the source, 10 over R1 divided by the sum, okay? V3 is gonna be the same thing, except for it's gonna change the numerator. So it's going to be the source times R3 over the sum, and that's this guy, okay? All right. And don't always, don't forget to put the units, okay? No, it shouldn't be any issues, not too bad, all right. Now, here's a, a simple little proof, okay? Why, why does this expression work, right? And so what you can do is think, well, uh, if I could represent this as a VS and I Ohm's law for this entire resistor uh, network in series, uh, we kind of did this already with the series. Uh, we can say Vs equals I R equivalent. Boom. Okay, I could solve for I, Vs over R equivalent. And we know if all we have all these uh, resistors in series, R equivalent should be R1 plus R2 plus R3. All right, done right there. Okay, I could apply Ohm's law to the individual resistors three, uh, three times if I wanted to. And what I would see is I would see V1 equals this I times R1. Well, if I take this expression here and substitute in for I, what do I get? I get V1 equals Vs times R1 over R equivalent. Doesn't that match our uh, general voltage divider uh, rule? It sure does, okay? And so this is matching there, good. If we do V2, it's the same thing. V2 equals IR2, good. If I take this I with the series in, substitute it in, I get the same pattern, right? And then same for V3. So 
notice how I've replaced essentially all this. You could totally do this analysis or you can just remember the voltage divider formula and you get it right away. So I hope the voltage divider formula just allows you to speed up, okay? Now you might ask, well, what about that plus or minus on here? That plus or minus when we're doing this one is actually accounting for the plus or minus in Ohm's law, okay? So hopefully everything is nice and consistent. So let's kind of do a little review. We have our fundamental KVL, KCL, um, and Ohm's law. And KVL, KCL, Ohm's law helped us show that resistors in series add, resistors in parallel add the reciprocal, and the voltage divider general rule. But the fundamental, if you remember only KVL, KCL, Ohm's law, you can derive everything else at the, to this point. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so this is. Um, where I wanna show where voltage dividers actually use in a very practical circuit, okay? And that is a potentiometer. And so what is going on inside a potentiometer? I think you guys all seen little knobs and dials. In fact, uh, I have one here. Here's a little knob and dial for one of the robotic projects I, I work on. And so this is a potentiometer, okay? And so this potentiometer has three terminals uh, one, two, three, okay. The middle terminal is gonna be a signal into my, let's say, microcontroller here, all right? And so I have two potentiometers. On the outside, I, I apply a constant voltage source, all right? And you could think of it as this middle signal is attached to a wiper where if I turn this knob, this wiper goes up and down, changing essentially the values of R1 and R2. If this knob is all the way up here, notice R2, the resistance between the top and the wiper is smaller, right? And then R2 becomes bigger, okay? And what we can do is we can say, well, what, how does this voltage change? Let's say this is constant, but how would this voltage change as I change this wiper? And could this voltage be used to control some other piece of machinery, right? Can a computer read that voltage? And it sure can. And so it relies on the voltage divider principle, right? You have some voltage here, let's say five volts or 3.3 volts, but constant. And if I apply my voltage divider principle, I get V out equals the source voltage times R2 over R1 plus R2, which is the total resistance of this entire potentiometer, okay? And you can see that if my wiper is high, then my voltage V out is going to match Vs. If my wiper is low, then my V out is going to be close to zero, right? And so um, the ratio of essentially R1 and R2 will change with the wiper position. And this is very useful for knobs, position encoders. Um, uh, this is a good point here. This device can fail, right? Imagine you get a little bit of corrosion in that wiper or this breaks, so a little connector breaks. And uh, there was one of the electricians on the ship, he gave a troubleshooting lecture in one of our classes, uh, McBullen. And uh, he mentioned that there was a situation where the machinery went down, the generators went down, and they were just searching in the dark for the reason why. Uh, they were checking the equipment, checking the machinery, and they, they finally boiled it down to, well, maybe the potential of the control knob is busted. And sure enough, that's what it was. That was the failure point. Once they replaced it, it was now sending a correct signal um, to, the, to uh, the plant and everything worked. So having an understanding of how these things work and that they are, well, all of electronics, all of these components are failure points um, is very, you know, valuable for your career. Okay, so let's keep going. Okay, let's look at another tool, the current divider. And it's very similar to the voltage divider, right? It's taking a current and dividing it. And so imagine you have a, system, a situation where you have multiple resistors now in parallel, right? So not in series, in parallel. Okay, and we double check, yep, this is in parallel. The bottom's touched, the top's touched, yay. I have some current that I know going in there, right? And so um, if I want to find the individual current in this branch, I know all the resistors and I know this total current, I can use the current divider rule to solve for these individual currents. And so let's look at the equation. Looks very similar to voltage divider. I n, which is one of these currents, is equal to plus or minus the total source times R equivalent, but parallel, not series, divided by the R end, okay? 
And so let's apply it to these two resistors. Let's look at the one on the left, resistor one. We go, okay, I wanna use the current divider. So I1 equals, we'll ignore the sign for now, IS, the total current, times the equivalent resistance of all of these divided by R1 in this case. And the total resistance in a, or the equivalent resistors in, in parallel, we can use that formula for two resistors, R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. So that applies to both of these. Okay, now what about the sign? How do I determine the plus or minus? Well, if I look at the current, see how they're in opposite directions? If they're opposite directions, we're gonna use the minus, okay? Now, if we're over here, look at these, I, S, and I, two are in the same direction, so we're gonna use the positive. And that's this very simple way of determining the sign for the plus or minus. Okay, let's follow the current divider uh, pattern. We go I, two equals I, S, times R equivalent parallel, so it's the same thing as this first one, divided by R2 in this case. Pretty easy to follow this pattern, not too bad, okay. Let's do another example with some numbers just to hit this home. So if I look at this situation here, ooh, interesting, I have a voltage supply. But let's say even though there's a voltage supply, I knew the current, the total current. Uh, I can still apply current divider because I have two resistors in parallel. I know the two values of the resistors and I can solve for I1 and I2, okay? So don't let this uh, situation confuse you. I have two resistors in parallel. I can still use current divider because uh, I can relate these currents to the total current coming out of these two resistors. Okay, great. Uh, let's solve for I1 and I2. Let's look at the first one here. I1 is equal to the source current, in this case it's seven amps, times R equivalent parallel divided by uh, its own resistance, which is 11 in this case. What's the sign? Well, both of these currents are in the same direction, so it's positive, okay? So that's, that's convenient, okay? And what's the equivalent resistance? It's R1, R2 over the sum. So in this case, it's 11 times five divided by 11 plus five. Okay, so I plug in the numbers and I get 2.19 amps total for this current going up, okay? Whereas the equivalent resistance is 3.43 ohms, okay? All right, let's look at the second one. In the second one, we can see I2 equals negative. Why negative? These currents are in the opposite direction, no problem. Uh, times the source current divided by R equivalent, the same R here, so that same 3.43, and don't forget it's the parallel one, yep, divided by its own resistance, which is five in this case, okay? And so this is negative 4.81 amps, okay? And so that's this guy. And again, we always need to stop and think, do these numbers make sense? If I applied a KCL at that node, would these all balance, right? And so we can check. So sum of the currents entering equals the sum of the currents leaving. So this I1 is entering and these two are leaving, right? So if we wrote KCL, we'd say I1 equals seven plus I2, but we might put a question mark. Does, do these numbers confirm or match this equation? Well, I1's easy, it's 2.19 amps, but does seven plus I2 equal the same thing? Well, let's do seven plus I2, which is negative 4.81, Sure enough, matches 2.19, yay. And so you can reason everything out intuitively or just check the math, but this is just another way of checking this. Okay, so again, let's repeat, what's the benefit? If I know the total current, and if I know all the resistors and the systems in parallel, I can solve for these individual currents, okay? Okay, let's look at, again, a little mini proof, very similar to the voltage divider proof. I have some current, which I know, I have some voltage across it. I have all the currents, you know, individual. And I wanna see if I can uh, get this uh, general pattern from this kind of uh, system here. By KVL, all the voltages are the same, right? And the reason why is because they're all in parallel. So Vs equals V1 equals V2 equals V3. I can apply Ohm's law, right, to everything. V1 equals positive I1, R1, and so on and so forth, okay? I also can apply Ohm's law to the entire system, Vs. So this was one big resistor. Vs is equal to Is times R equivalent, right? Okay, good. And so what I can say is I1, I1 is equal to uh, V1 over R1, right? If I brought this over, okay, um, which I know is V, uh, Vs, right? V1 is the same as Vs, okay? 
Uh, and then VS is the same as ISR equivalent, if that makes sense. So this whole thing here is V1, which is equal to VS, which is this guy. All right. Okay. Does the pattern match for this one? Let's check. I2 is equal to V2 over R2, right? So this is V2, which we know by KBL is also this, over R2. Good. What about I3? I3 is V3 over R3, but we know V3 is, again, same as Vs, which is ISR equivalent, good, over R3. And what is these R equivalent for all three? It's the parallel, because they're all in parallel, okay? Does this match the current divider pattern? It sure does. You have the source current, you have the R equivalent, and then its own individual resistor. So again, we're using Ohm's law, KBL, KCL as our fundamentals. Uh, but current divider is just another trick, another tool in our tool bag to be able to kind of crunch the stuff a little bit faster. Okay. And we call it current divider because this current is dividing the total current here. So the sum of these currents better be smaller than the total current here, right? Because you can imagine currents going here and then splitting off into these branches. Okay. Now you have a trick. I actually have a trick for two resistors, right? So let's say I have perfectly two resistors and uh, use this one if you like. You can use the general one if you like. It's up to you. So here's the way it works. You still have that plus or minus that you've taken care of. Here I just use the positive version, right? Um, I have the currents going in the same direction in this example, but you still have to account for the plus or minus, of course. But let's look at the trick. I1 is equal to the total current times the opposite resistor over the sum. So you just gotta be a little bit careful. I know it seems a little backwards. You're wait, I1 is the opposite resistor in the numerator over the sum? Yes, it is. So that means I2 is the other opposite resistor. Yeah, R1 over the sum, yes. I like, I mean, if it's just two resistors, I like this formula because it's just so easy to punch this into the calculator, right? But if you just wanna be, you know, rigid to the general one, yeah. Or if you're dealing with more than one or more than two resistors in parallel, use this, right? Okay, so, um, and then it's a, you know, I guess you could look at the very simple proof. You could say, well, we know this is the general formula. I1 equals ISR equivalent over R1, right? It's not, no change here. But if I plug in a, the parallel trick for two, two uh, resistors, Notice the R1 and the R1 are going to cancel and I'm left with R2 in the top and I would get that. Um, so yeah, you can see that the same. If you did the same thing here, you would see you get this. Is, is it any different than this one? No, you're going to get exactly the same result. Maybe it just speeds you up a little bit, right? Instead of having to calculate this one over R1 to the right and this, maybe you just go right to that formula. Maybe it's faster. Either way, be very careful. Make sure you get, you know, you, you know how to apply them correctly. Um, and of course, don't forget the plus or minus that uh, has to go uh, in that term, okay? Very good. Okay, the last big topic is nodal analysis and nodal Ohm's law. Okay, so this nodal analysis is what, what we're gonna use to combine Ohm's law using node voltages and KCL. Hmm, interesting, node voltages. Well, you know what KCL is, but you might not know exactly what a node voltage is. Okay, the node voltage is a node, uh, sorry, it's a voltage across a node and a reference. Okay, a node and a reference. Remember, you always need two points for a voltage. So when you see a node voltage, you, you wanna think in your head, well, what's the reference with respect to what? That should be in your, uh, in your thought process. And so you must identify both. So here's an example. Um, let's say you have a circuit with all sorts of elements. I'm not putting in the elements. And here's your reference. Notice we put ground here, the ground symbol, okay? And so this is a reference, and we're gonna call this reference zero volts. You could put this reference anywhere, right? We could put the reference here, we could put the reference here, we could put the reference here. But if we're just analyzing the system now, you wanna keep your reference fixed and not move it around. Once you place it, like I said, you could place it anywhere, but then don't move it. Okay, so we have a bunch of nodes. Do you see A, B, C, D? These are all nodes. And then you could say, well, we have a node voltage at A, which is we'll call VA, and one at B, which we'll call VB, one at C, D, so on and so forth. If you just saw, let's say, node voltage VA is 10 volts, 
Well, that is equivalent to the voltage from point A all the way to the reference, which happens to be this voltage with the positive terminal here and the minus terminal here. Can you also see that's the equivalent of the voltage from across these two elements or across these three elements, right? So VA is the voltage from here to here. Yep, it's the same as this, this, or if, I guess if you wanted to be a little crazy, it's the same voltage as this. Yep, okay. And think of the node voltage. I, what I like about nodal analysis is that it's very uh, physically relevant because we do this all the time. Let's so say I got my nice multimeter leads. It's like saying, here's my ground, I'm putting out my ground. What is the node voltage there? Is it 10 volts? Okay, yes or no, whatever. Yeah, but you can measure. What's the node voltage here? What's the node voltage here? What's the node voltage here? Okay, and so I really like nodal analysis because it's, uh, yeah, it, it it's correlates with the physical world. All right, okay. Um, anything, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I'd like to kind of highlight. Um, let's look at this point D. The node voltage for point D is actually way out here, right? Um, it's here's the red lead, here's the black lead, right? Um, but notice we can write it way out there. Okay, all right. Let's keep going. Okay, so now that you have a special, uh, or sorry, not special, but kind of a new way to think of voltage is still two points. Now we can have a special way to write Ohm's law. It's still Ohm's law, but it's just written in terms of these node voltages. Okay, so let's say we have a resistor here. And let's say we, instead of having the voltage across it defined, we have a node voltage at one side and a node voltage at other and the other side specified. Okay, and we know the resistance and let's say we're solving for the current, right? Normally Ohm's law, we, we solve for the voltages, right? Okay, and this is the voltage across, but in nodal Ohm's law, you're actually directly solving for the current first. Okay, now there might be some reference way out somewhere else where these two voltages are, are uh, referenced to, but this is the equation for nodal Ohm's law. And, and I think you can pick up the pattern pretty quickly here. The current, and you gotta look at the arrow, is gonna be equal to the node voltage at the base, right? Or at the tail of the arrow minus the node voltage at the head of the arrow, VB in this case, divided by the total resistance. And I hope you can see that this is the same as Ohm's law. V equals I if I brought the R over V equals I times R, right? I'd be getting the same thing. Now, the plus or minus, you might ask, well, where's that plus or minus coming from? That plus or minus is determined by the direction of this arrow and which one you, you put in first, right? Because you notice if I do VB minus VA, it's gonna change the sign of something. So that's what accounts for that plus or minus, okay? So this is my nodal Ohm's law, okay? All right, uh, let's look at this example. Let's say I have uh, the arrow flipped. Well, I in this case is gonna be VB minus VA over R. Pretty easy, right? Not too bad. And so just to repeat, the pattern is, the current equals the node voltage of the tail minus the head divided by the resistance. So not too bad, okay? All right, let's look at a mini proof. And when I say mini proof, uh, what I'm saying is, let's do the same analysis using our KVL, KCL, and regular Ohm's law that we're used to and see if we actually get the same result as this. Okay, so in this case, what should we get? We should get, if I follow the nodal Ohm's law uh, rule, I should get this, VA minus VB over R, okay? That's this, good, and this is exactly the same system. But now, let's use our KVL uh, and regular Ohm's law uh, uh, rules. So remember, this resistor with these node voltages is equivalent to this system here. So this system is equivalent to this system. You might have some ground somewhere else, right, okay? You have VA with respect to that ground with the positive terminal at the node and the negative terminal at the ground and VB with the positive terminal here and the negative terminal at the ground, okay? And so what you could do is you could write a KVL loop and let's carefully do it. Minus VA plus V plus VB equals zero. Okay, so I'm following my uh, textbook for lecture one to first principles. If I solve for V, notice V is like the V across like I would normally specify Ohm's law. V in this case is gonna be VA minus VB. 
And so let's just apply regular Ohm's law. In this case, if I just look at this isolated, the error goes into the positive terminal and I get V equals plus I R, right? Good. And now let me bring in, you know, this node part, VA minus VB equals I R and I get I equals VA minus VB over R. Notice I get the same formula. So this version here was using our normal textbook process and here is just using our trick. See how fast the trick is though, right? The new nodal Ohm's law way. Just immediately, if I know the rules, I can get to here immediately. Here I had to KBL, Ohm's law, uh, kind of gross, right? Um, but it gives me a way to write the current explicitly in terms of the node voltages. Nice, okay? Uh, we could do the other way. Let's say I had this situation. So no, uh, nodal Ohm's law would tell me I equals VB minus VA over R. Yep, I could do this. And notice I didn't change the direction of V. Here V I kept the same, right? Um, I flipped the direction of I though. Okay, and I can do the, again the KVL minus VA plus V plus VB. I could solve for V, V is VA minus VB. Um, in this case, Ohm's law, if I were to look at its own individual Ohm's law, I equals minus uh, IR, right? Or sorry, V equals minus IR, good. And then I could go VA minus VB equals minus IR. And notice this, um, I equals minus VA minus VB over R, which means that it's gonna flip the order of VB and VA. And let me scooch this up so that you guys can see it, okay? And these are the same. So I hope this helps, right? I, I hope this tool helps. And we're gonna do lots of problems later on that use this a lot. So it's a very, like I said, it's a very nice way of using Ohm's law with node voltages. And these are easy measurements to get, in fact. If you had a resistor and you can easily just measure the two node voltages, boom, you can figure out what the current is going through that, right? All right, that's all I got. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture. Like and subscribe, of course. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, and I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.